Today, we have Olivia Tardif from New York University School of Dentistry. Olivia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Definitely, definitely. So if you could go ahead and give us a brief summary of your dental school journey. So basically where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major, where did you major in, and if you took a year off or not? Sure. Um, so I'm from Vero Beach, Florida. It's a small town, like an hour and a half south of Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Brandeis University in Boston for my undergrad. Um, I majored in health science, society, and policy, which is our version of public health. Mm -hmm. um, I minored in journalism, and then I graduated in 2018, and I went straight to dental school, so I started at NYU in the fall of 2018, so now I'm a D2. Awesome, awesome, and so um, you might not know this, because obviously you didn't do it, but does your school have any type of like pre-dent programs uh, for people interested in going to NYU? So we have a pre-dental society at um, Brandeis. It was kind of new when I was graduating. Um, I think it's definitely picked up more steam. Something that I did that I loved for anybody in the Boston area that's interested, I did a pre-dental program at Harvard, um, which was run by some of their dental students. Um, super cool. It was like five, six weeks. We would come in like every couple weeks. And I have a friend who's at Harvard now for dental school who did that with me um, back when we were both uh, juniors. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I did the impressions day at Tufts. Um, I know BU had like a similar impressions day. So um, just kind of like putting feelers out was super helpful to me. And then I know that NYU um, does like a Saturday, Acad it's called Saturday Academy. And it was started by one of our professors. So it's to increase diversity in the health profession. And it's seven sessions in the fall at NYU um, and uh, high school kids can come in and do impressions and we teach them about um, just basic drilling and um, it's super cool. My Both my roommates are involved in that too for anybody that's in the New York area. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And so Olivia, obviously um, you did well in your DAT, you know, for you to come straight from undergrad <laughs> to dental school. So yeah. What's like your number one tip on how to be successful with taking it? So I would say, first of all, I didn't always do well in the DAT. I took it twice. Um, okay. So the first time I did, okay, um, I wasn't like overly happy with how I did. And I felt like I didn't have enough time to study. I only studied for a month oh, yeah. um, versus the second time I took it, I studied for almost two months. Um, I studied like end of May to end of July. Um, right before I applied during my senior year. So I would say um, my biggest tip to anybody studying for the DAT is to, to um, I used the calendar that was on DAT bootcamp, um, the one that the founder Ari makes, and I love him. I like, can't say enough good things about the website. Um, I would say stick to a calendar, or if you want to make a schedule, make a schedule and stick to it, uh, because that's going to give you the structure that you need to be studying for the DAT. I use DAT Destroyer, also awesome resource. Um, and then I saw in your video the other day that you guys just put out um, advice from Dr. Holloway about um, different things, and I heard her say you want to take full-length practice tests, um, and I totally agree. Don't just sit down and take a practice test and then and then not look at, you know, what things you got wrong or kind of like glaze over the things you got right. If you're going to take a practice test, really make sure that you're um, looking at your feedback and looking at where you can improve and kind of like hone in on those areas. Right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And so, like we just said, you did well in your DAT, then you obviously got an interview. So can you kind of walk us through what your interview day was like? Yeah, so NYU was my first interview, so of course I was nervous. Um, it's completely normal to be nervous. Um, so I got there, um, I think the interviews started at like eight, I got there at like seven. Um, you don't need to be that extra, but definitely get there early, uh, make sure that you're comfortable in the place where you are. Um, I wasn't super familiar with New York, my parents were there with me, and so we wanted to make sure that I had enough time to get there. Um, I checked in and then went to the admissions office and kind of waited. Um, the way that it works at NYU is they have a faculty member that comes in and sort of, they call your name, they grab you, they pull you back to one of the admissions offices, and then they just ask you questions. Um, it kind of varies from school to school. I had a couple different interviews, but at NYU specifically, um, 
they just want to know about uh, why you're interested in dentistry and what your undergrad experience was like. And um, the interview for the most part is, is pretty casual. It kind of varies from student to student and like faculty member to faculty member, kind mm-hmm. of what they'll talk about. Um, my roommate, one of my roommates from last year, the guy that she interviewed with was super research oriented. So her interview was sort of more oriented towards the research that she did in college. Um, mine was not as much. I didn't do research in undergrad. Um, so that part is finished. And then they put you back in the room and you get to kind of meet the other people that you're interviewing with. I thought that was one of the most fulfilling parts of the interview, just because, um, Some of the people I interviewed with went to different schools, um, but I still keep in touch with them and it's super cool to see what they do um, at their school and kind of like, it's cool to see them go. I follow one girl on Instagram that I interviewed with and it's cool to see her go through the similar processes that I'm going through now, like learning how to do a crown prep or learning how to drill last year. Um, So definitely make friends with the other interviewees. and then they have an admissions um, representative pull you back also just to check on class, your, your class progress and to make sure that you're on track to graduate um, if you haven't already. And then um, the rest of the day was more, was even more casual than that. You just meet with students and you ask them questions. Um, they give you a tour. Now I serve as a tour guide and it's funny. It's it's ironic to like look at the students now because they're all so nervous and I'm like guys it's okay you don't have to be so nervous right. um you know nobody's gonna like film your interactions with the students it's really for you to feel comfortable and for you to ask them the questions that you might not want to ask admissions representatives um so I went on the tour and then we had a lunch with the uh students one of the students is a d4 I still kept in contact or excuse me one of the students that I was with was a D3 at the time, was a D4 last year. Mm-hmm. Now he's in residency and I still kept in contact with him. He was a super great resource for when I had questions. Um, he was really great about checking in on me during D1. Um, so also definitely like make friends with the students that are there because even if you don't end up going to the dental school, it's a really great resource. Definitely, definitely. Okay, awesome, awesome. And so now you are a D2. Uh, yeah. How was your first year at like at, NYU how was that like because I mean it varies from each general school to each general school so how was it at NYU um so I um had never really struggled in in college in high school um when I needed to apply myself I would apply myself and for the most part I got the results that I wanted in general school it just was different Mm -hmm. not because the material is any harder this is what I always try to tell people when I go on tours um kind of like the first rumor I wanted to sell about dental school. It's not, I don't think the material is any harder than anything that you've experienced in uh, college or high school. Well, definitely different. It's not any more, it's not any more difficult than the material in in college. It's just the volume of it is incredible. Um, And again, like that's nothing to scare anybody. Um, You understand too, because you're in dental school. Um, But you know, you'll go to a class and you'll sit down for a lecture, a two-hour lecture, and it's like 200 slides of material. Mm -hmm. And so I think sort of the thing that I learned my first year and into my second year is uh, what material is important and then what information is more just for you to know for the future or for you to reference in the future. Um, So first year was more of a struggle for me because I went through everything and I was like, I absolutely have to know everything and let me try to use all the same study skills I used in college that worked for me. Um, and so it was, first year was a lot of trial and error for me. Mm-hmm. Um, now I've sort of found things that work better. Um, like for example, first year, I spent a lot of time making handwritten notes in different colors with different pens and it didn't, it wasn't helping. Um, I was spending hours doing that. It would take me like two hours to get through one lecture and I was losing so much time. I wasn't remembering the information anyway. So then the second year, actually, I have this group chat with a couple of my friends, my one friend um, who I always go to for advice and who always uh, helps me out and who always answers my questions about studying. Um, she sent me this video from this guy who was in med school in um, the UK and he talked about how effective making flashcards was for him. 
um, because it required you to recall the information. And so I've done that this year for every lecture and every class that I have, I make flashcards. Um, and we're lucky at NYU that we've had past students that make notes. Um, and so instead of spending all the time making my own notes, I print out notes that students have made in the past. Yep. Um, and so that's been a really helpful routine for me, but I didn't know that I could do that and still remember the information. D1. Right. Um, so D1 was more of a struggle. It was a lot of trial and error, but the kind of the biggest piece of advice I give to students I give tours to is like to keep at it um, and not to get discouraged when you get to dental school because it so many people have done it before and like so many people will continue to do it like it's not that you're not capable you just might have to do some trial and error just a, a couple of readjustments you know here yeah exactly exactly definitely and so uh two questions quick questions is nyu yeah. master fail or no nyu we do um grades plus minuses everything okay awesome and do you have any type of like clinical experience within that first year or is it just strictly books? So now it's sort of changing. Um, the, when I was a D1, we didn't do this, but now the D1s are starting to do this. Um, starting this year, the D1s are shadowing in clinic, which is super, super cool. Um, we as D2 start to shadow in clinic as well. Um, so this is gonna be something I was also gonna talk about um, later on, but we at NYU have something called group practice directors. So we're each, split into when you're a D1, you get divided into your group practice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in Dr. Watson's group practice, shout out to the Watson. Um, <laughs> and so you kind of are in lab, um, your preclinical lab, and you're in um, clinic with the same people that you were with in D1. So you see them all the time, you bond with them, which I think helps to make NYU a little bit smaller. I know people might be concerned about the class size. Um, so, you go in there and shadow, and you shadow the D3s and D4s in your group practice. Um, so now starting, starting this year, like I said, the D1s are doing that. And then something else that we do D1 and into D2 that I really, really love was um, pediatric outreaches. So um, uh, in New York City, the public schools have an agreement with the dental schools. And so we go in and provide um, OHI, like oral hygiene instruction, and then we also um, D1, we apply fluoride varnish um, mm -hmm. if the kids, well, actually, I think to every kid's teeth. Um, it's not just if kids need it. Then D2, it's if kids need it, then we do sealant, which require right. Right. a little bit more technique and a dry area and all that fun stuff. Right. Right. Um, so that's kind of like the exposure that we get clinically, um, D1, and then into D2 before we go to clinic. Okay, okay. And so, I mean, I was going to ask you, uh, what was unique about NYU, but I know you just did mention the group practice things. Um, granted, we have that at Tufts as well, uh, but we yeah. kind of incorporate that our third and our fourth year. Um, yeah. So the fact that y'all have it starting your first year and you're kind of like with that faculty throughout your entire four years, that's pretty awesome. Um, is, yeah, there yeah. Else, is there anything else that you're just like, okay, NYU does this that nobody else does or? Um, I mean, I think, I think because it's, we do definitely meet our group practice directors. So we have this thing, and I'm sure you guys have it too. Um, we have, we do this early morning once a month presentation course called um, yeah, yeah, we have Integrated that. Case Presentations. Yeah. Uh, basic. Um, so yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's where we get our, our exposure to our group practice directors before we go to clinic. Um, they kind of get to know us a little more during D2 because we're shadowing. Sure. Um, but I think, I think, like you said, the most unique part is the fact that we know what group practice we're in starting D1 and that we get to really bond with those people. So um, I get along super well with my group practice. Um, a lot of the closer girlfriends I have are from my group practice, which is really awesome. And like, everybody's super helpful. Um, I think too, as far as the size goes um, for NYU, like people, I've, I've been asked before, like, is NYU competitive? It, you know, does the class size make it scary? And um, I, I've only experienced like students being helpful to each other. Like I said, um, D3s, D4s have been super helpful to us too, like giving us their old notes. Um, everybody is is like a very is is in like a very helpful mindset um, because this school is is because the class size is larger. Um, but NYU really does, I think, do um, do a good job of trying to make the class size feel smaller than it is. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And so last question of the interview, 
yeah. if you were to go back and talk to yourself, your younger self, while you were up yeah. going to dental school, what's one thing that you would tell yourself? Um, so I always say this to friends of mine. Um, I think I was pretty neurotic before I went to dental school and like dental school has only made me more nervous. Um, just because I, you know, I'm always scared of like missing a due date or um, not knowing all the information as well, not so much now, but during D1 especially. Um, and I think as things, as time has gone on, um, I, as I've gotten more confident in my study skills and as I've gotten more confident in, you know, knowing the information that were, that's thrown at us for classes and stuff. Um, I, I've sort of started to trust that like everything's going to be okay. And that, you know, um, the goal that I set out to do is not that far off, even though I still have a couple years in school and even though I haven't started in clinic yet. Um, so I think the advice that I would give my younger self when I started was to know that like, it's going to be okay and that you're going to get there if that's what you really want to do. Um, and of course, like obviously at the time and still now it is what I want to do. Um, but just, just to like trust in the, in the process. Um, and of course, like, it's a lot easier for me to say that because right, I right. came straight from undergrad to dental school. Um, but all the time I just try to like tell myself that everything's going to be okay. And that, you know, nothing is like the end of the world and that, you know, I'm going to get there. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Olivia, thank you so much for, for allowing us to speak with you today. Um, if any of our viewers have any type of questions, what's the best way that they can contact you? Um, so I would say my NYU email is the best way to contact me. It's um, OGT, my initials, 211 at nyu.edu. Awesome, awesome. And of course, I'll put a, a link or a, I'll write that in the description box below and that everybody awesome. can flood your inbox with questions. So, um, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> once again, Olivia, thank you so much. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your second year. I mean, I know it's kind Thank of you. chaotic right now, but, yeah. on, but um, everything will be okay. We're going to make it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but everybody, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any questions for Future DDS, go to our Instagram at underscore Future DDS and send us a DM there. But until next time, see y'all later.